You know, there is a war going on around here, around you and I in the world. There is an actual war going on between the forces of good and the forces of evil. And it's not a pretend war. It's not a make-believe war. It's a real war with real casualties. And I know that some people believe and some people teach that God is in control. And what happens in the world is God's will. If there's a plane wreck, if there's a car wreck, if somebody dies of cancer, that's God's will. But that's not what the Bible says. You know, if you and I are going to find truth, and if we're going to be satisfied with what we learn spiritually, then we've got to take this Word of God and we've got to let it speak to us. And when we let the Word of God speak to us about spiritual things, one of the things that lets us know big time is that there is a huge war going on around between the forces of good and the forces of evil. And you can see this in many, many ways. Now, you can't see this particular thing in the NIV because the translators, because of their theology that everything that happens is God's will, translates it right out of the text. But for example, I have here um, an ESV, an English Standard Version, or if you look at a King James Version or New American Bible, you'll find in the Bible the phrase God of hosts. The Lord of hosts <laughs> occurs a lot. Grab a concordance, look up the word hosts. Find the phrase Lord of hosts. What in the world does that mean? Lord of hosts makes God sound like maybe he's in charge of a bunch of waiters. <laughs> I don't think so. The word hosts, both in the Hebrew usage and the Greek usage, means armies. Our God is a God of the armies. But then we have to ask ourselves, well, wait a minute. If everything that happens is God's will, who is he fighting and why does he need an army? There is a war going on between the forces of good and the forces of evil, and there are actual casualties. When somebody dies in a car wreck, that's not God's fault. God didn't do that. Let's look at Exodus chapter 15, please. The book of Exodus chapter 15, very interesting statement here in verse 3. It says, the Lord is a warrior. Really? Why does the Lord need to be a warrior? Who is the Lord fighting? Well, like I say, there's this war going on around us that we're a part of. And this war is very real, and it's portrayed all through Scripture. Let's look at Psalm 18. Psalm 18 is an absolutely fascinating psalm. And it's the kind of psalm you can take comfort in when things are going wrong in your life. Because it shows that in this battle between good and evil, which has so many casualties, that God will, will fight for us. He'll be on our side. Look at verse 4 of Psalm 18. If you have a Bible, please, uh, please look along with me. Verse eight, uh, Psalm 18, verse 4, The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. This is a man in trouble. You get in trouble sometimes. I get in trouble sometimes. This is the man in trouble. Look at this, verse 6. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. How many people do that? How many people are hurting in the world and they cry out to God for help? Now, if you believe that God's in control, here's what would happen. God's up in heaven. Somebody's down there on earth calling up and he says, I don't know what he's upset about. Everything that happens is my will. You know, if there's a, somebody sick, somebody dying, somebody in trouble, God's up there. Yeah, it's my doing. It's my doing. Just don't worry about it. Stay calm. But that's not the way the Bible portrays God acting. This man's in trouble. He was one of God's men. He was a believer. And he's in trouble. And he cries to the Lord in his distress. And watch what happened. Verse 7. The earth trembled and quaked. The foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because God was angry. Absolutely. You think God is not emotionally involved in what happens down here on earth? He's absolutely emotionally involved. He cares if you're hurting. He cares if I'm hurting. And he wants to be involved. And, his, and your pain is not his doing. There's a war going on, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 8, smoke rose from his nostrils because he's mad. Consuming fire came out from his mouth. Burning coals blazed from out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Absolutely. Verse 14, he shot his arrows and scattered the enemies. Why are there enemy, enemies if anything, everything is happening is God's will? No, he, God will work in our behalf. You've seen it, I've seen it, where God works in our behalf. 
Can he win every battle? No, he can't. It's a real war going on. Great bolts of lightning routed them. It says later on, verse 17, he rescued me from my powerful enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our God who is really involved and and he wants us to win. Let's look at Ephesians, please. Chapter 6, the book of Ephesians, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Here's what the Bible says about you and I. Chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For our struggle... Some versions perhaps better read, for we wrestle. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. There are real, genuine forces of evil that you and I struggle against. It's not that everything that happens is God's will, and what we're supposed to do is just be complacent and compliant and try to figure out how to be very peaceful when bad things happen to us. We're in a war, and we're players. We're on God's team, and we struggle against the enemy just like God struggles against the enemy. And you might say, well, John, isn't God the biggest player? How come he doesn't straighten things out? God, we covered this in another session, God gave the world to Adam and Eve. They gave it to the devil. He owns it legally, and he's causing trouble. There will be a time in the future when God will take it back. You know, Jesus Christ is perfect theology. Jesus Christ, he, he struggled against evil forces all the time. How many sick people did he heal? How many evil spirits did he cast out? And he never said, oh, these evil spirits are from God. Jesus Christ taught that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. So if God sent an evil spirit, and then Jesus Christ comes and kicks out the evil spirit... <laughs> that seemed to me pretty much like Jesus to be fighting God. He's not. God didn't send the evil spirit. He didn't send the disease. He didn't send the sickness. Absolutely. What did Jesus Christ say? Let's go to Luke chapter 13. The Gospel of Luke, please. Chapter 13. Let's hear what Jesus Christ had to say. Here's a woman that had an infirmity. She was bowed over for years of her life. And in Luke chapter 13, verse 15 The Lord answered, you hypocrites, talking to the people who didn't want him to heal, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years? Who did Jesus cry? Satan smote this woman. Satan made this woman sick. Jesus Christ never blamed sickness or death on God, never. And you and I need to learn from that. Jesus Christ's life and ministry was perfect theology. Absolutely. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. Book of Acts, please. Chapter 10, verse 38. Powerful verse about the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. It says in verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, for God was with him. Interesting. 1 John 5, 19 says the devil is in control of the world. And Jesus Christ, he didn't go around healing all the people that God had made sick. No, he healed all the people who were under the power of the devil. It's important, ladies and gentlemen, that you and I don't blame God for the sickness and death that's going on in the world around us. It's not God's doing. God is working so hard to heal people and to bless people. And there's a war going on, and some people get hurt, and some people get sick, but that's not God's doing. We shouldn't be blaming God. If we want to learn more about not blaming God, here's the book that we in Spirit and Truth Fellowship have called Don't Blame God. You can learn a lot more on the subject. But if we just think about the life of Jesus Christ, and if we let the Word of God speak to us without bringing our conceived notions to it, we will see... God is not the cause of evil and death. There's a war going on, and the devil and God are fighting that war. The good news is that war is going to be over one day. God bless. 